is so fun. Nothing sweet. Yeah, I didn't get anything sweet. She says, but nothing sweet. I need a candy bar or something to go along with my nutritious lunch. That'll be the next stop. This is the way we travel. Dog on top of everything. No foot room. But you know what? It's fun. Traveling days are great days for school. Right now, I'm doing language arts. That's one of your favorites. Ainsworth, Nebraska, a little early season bow hunting. Here we come. This is a really good spot because the pop, we're right next to the popcorn field here. And this is where we've seen a lot of deer traveling through. They kind of funnel through right here. So let's put that one up there and see what we can do. We are setting up a browning trail cam so we can see some big bucks. This is cool. Isn't it? Callie, oh. don't jump in, that's... It's like the water just wore this way, wore the rock away all the way Mad Dog, I'd say we had a pretty fun day before archery season starts tomorrow. Tomorrow evening will be the first time hopefully you get out hunting. We're here with Todd Ruby of Traveling Towers and he brought us two towers today and he's going to show us how to set them up. He was kind enough to bring them all the way here to Nebraska to our hotel. So Todd, are you going to show us what to do with them, right? How we're going to, uh, you take them out on the four-wheeler? Use them on a four-wheeler or a UTV or a pickup. So yeah, you just take it out. You can transport it from one place to another in a matter of minutes. Um, if you find a spot, if you got to attach your four-wheeler, you can be up hunting in about a minute. So, awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, because you see so many places, oh, I might want to hunt there, but there's no tree or, you know, a, a, out here there's might be just a small cedar or something like right. that or a small pine tree that um, you can so, yeah. have a stand there that yep. fast. That's yep. awesome. All right, well, I'm excited to get put these to use, huh? And there you have it. We're ready to roll with our traveling tower. It's cozy in here, isn't it, Maddie? It'll be nice and warm. What's that? <laughs> What are we doing? We are going to set up a ground blind because the wind changed, so. The wind came from where to where? What do we have going on here? Uh, it was south, but now it's north. Yeah, it's coming out of the north, northwest. So. So we have to switch over. Hopefully we can get tucked into them other cedar trees and stay ahead, and I hope they don't freak out if they see it. Yeah. Hopefully they won't get to see it. About the time they do, Sometimes when you're hunting, you have to be prepared to change, and we had to because the wind was coming out of the south the whole time we were hunting, and then it changed to north, so we had to switch our blind, but we got it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get me <to> <laughs> Yes, <please>. <laughs> <laughs> The north wind really cools things down, but I hope it makes the deer move. We're sitting here looking at my other blind that we hunt when the wind's coming out of the south, but it switched, so now we're sitting here. But the good thing is, the deer have a trail that goes right between our two blinds. So hopefully we can make it happen.
the end of the evening and we saw fawn in a doe. And I didn't want to take the doe because I had a fawn and there's lots more mature does without fawns. So I decided maybe I'd wait, but didn't see anything, so maybe tomorrow. Today we're out on our Nebraska property with Sandy Benson of the Nebraska ne Forest Service. Nebraska Forest Service, and we are here to look into getting into the program of the Forest Fuels Program. Management, yes. Management program, right? Reduction and program, right? <laughs> Man management usually involves fuels reduction. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. You know, our main objective is to improve this because it's just so overgrown and overrun with cedars. We want to improve the pine, we want to improve the oaks, um, but also we want to get into planting some wildlife food plots too. So it's kind of wildlife slash cattle, horse type type mm -hmm. deal that we're, we're really looking to achieve all of that. 2012, even though it started out to be a little bit normal, we thought it just quit. Turned into a really and bad. We just had a huge drought and it started, you can see a lot of the uh, trees across the canyon there, a lot of the pines and even the cedars. The cedars. Dead, and a lot of that's just direct drought kill. Yeah. But more what it does is the drought weakens the trees and it uh, invites insects and disease to come oh, in and right. finish them off. Yeah. yeah. And so that's basically what's happening. In our ponderosa pines here, we have uh, two major problems this year since the drought has been uh, the ips, which is a bark beetle. It's not traditionally as bad as the mountain pine beetle, which is really you know, taken out a lot of acres mm -hmm. in the Black Hills and other parts of the West. But uh, it stressed so many trees that they're kind of doing a good imitation of it. And we've got places along both the Snake River and the Niobrara River that there's up to 50% of the trees being killed by the oh, wow. bark beetles. Wow. Now, to put that in perspective, Ponderosa Pine loves to grow in open park-like stands. And since about the 1950s, we have gotten really, really good at suppressing wildfires. And so the law of unintended consequences means we had a huge buildup of flammable fuels and it's understory uh, fuels. Yeah, the understory yeah. fuels and uh, since that time eastern red cedar has also come in used to be confined to either some deeper canyons where that you get the good quality cedar growing but we had prairie fires that would keep it off of the prairies and the hillsides and we got too good at putting those out and they got away from us and so it stressed the ponderosa pine forest it stressed the deciduous forests and it's, it crowds them out. And basically by thinning them out, you can all, all, almost hear them say, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really learned a lot today from Sandy about how the trees are dying from beetles and diseases and drought. So we're gonna have some removed from our property for fire hazards. <laughs> okay, you can do my feet now. Okay. Let's go. This is the real popcorn on the cob that you can actually put in the microwave and it pops. So we're gonna try it tonight, see how it works. Well, it is my first evening hunting here in Nebraska and I have chosen to hunt alongside this corn pivot. There is still standing corn and there are so many acorns. There's so much food for them right now that I'm, I'm not sure what's gonna happen here because they really don't need to move. But I'm going to sit here beside this cedar, which is blocking my wind. The wind is in our favor though, and see what happens tonight. I hadn't seen a thing all evening. I was tucked into a cedar along the fence row. Last light, the cameraman looks over about 100 yards and says, I see a buck. And I said, nah, -uh, you're, you're full of it. And he said, no, I swear, I see a buck. So I look over and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's that big six that we kept seeing on the trail cameras. So we watched him a little bit. He was, he was actually exactly where we had wanted to sit, but we decided that we couldn't see well enough there, so we moved on down the fence row. 
So we said, you know what, if he makes his way around the other side of that big bush, we're going to hurry up, try to sneak down there and see if we can move in on him. Well, we did. We got down there as fast and as quietly as we could. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a 20 yard shot here. When I step around this bush, he's going to be standing right there. And oh, I slowly made my way around the bush and no deer. I have no idea because as we're walking down there, I could see both sides of the bush. He didn't go out into the CRP. He didn't look to me like he went into the corn, but obviously he must have angled straight away just enough that he made it into the corn before I got there. And I was very, very disappointed to say the least. What the heck? He must have angled away from us and went right in this corn or something. I thought for sure when I came around that bush, he was going to be like less than 20 yards or something because I couldn't see him come out either side when I was sneaking down here. Oh my gosh. Oh well, I never expected that to happen. Just look up and see him standing there. Thought I had a last ditch just before dark effort, but I guess not. We'll try again tomorrow. The nice farmer that owns the popcorn field that we hunted on told us we could take a few popcorn cobs, I guess. A few ears of the popcorn. Yeah. See how tiny the little kernels are? So, what did he say? Put it in the bag. He said we put it in a brown paper bag. Do you think we should just try one first? Sure. He sure. said put it in a brown paper bag, close it up, and put it in the microwave. He didn't tell us how long though, so I'm gonna try a couple minutes and we'll see when we start hearing it pop what happens. Or when the microwave blows up, nope. then... <laughs> then we're done. <laughs> then we're done popping. It's popping! Wow. That's awesome. I was actually kind of doubting it. I know you were. <laughs> oh, smell it! That's awesome. Oh my gosh! That's crazy! It like stays on the cob. Oh, that's cool! <laughs> that's so that is so cool! <laughs> it's like a popcorn on the cob. We are walking out to our blind to go hunting, and I hope a big buck shows up. But I really like the 11 point that's like that tall and that wide. <laughs> Super big, 
He's like an 11 point, but I really liked him. He was really cool. I picked the gold dip bolt, and I said, I think this one will be the lucky one. I think it was. And I don't really care how big it is. That's like a trophy for my size. He should be a spike, but he's about a, what, eight point? I don't even know. <laughs> he's like an eight point that's about this tall and this wide. But I really liked him, so I took the shot. He was ready to go have a movie night with some popcorn, but he didn't make it there. <laughs> I don't think so. Maddie and Matt are having a great time together. She has her whole life to hunt larger record book animals, but right now she is just having fun the way it should be. He looks cool already. <laughs> He's cool. Ah. What do you think of him? He's awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, broken, eight, nine. <laughs> nine point this size. He should only be like a four point. He's awesome. Rest in peace, dude. Thanks for the awesome hunt. I think it's way funner for me hunting with the camera sitting behind you. <laughs> because your excitement is what does it for me. And you know what? That is this the is, coolest, that is one the of the coolest deer. Coolest tiny deer I've ever seen. I got one. I know, I saw it. <laughs> I, you said it was an 11 point or something and I was freaking out. <laughs> yeah. It was a special was 11 point. Good job, Mad Dog. Thanks. Hasta luego. <laughs> Good night, love you. Good night, bye, love you guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>